Hey, what's going on guys? My name is CarQ and today we have Yeetle returning to the channel as a guest for the third time. Today we have some updated ball tips for you. Hey, I'm Yeetle. I'm an Overwatch streamer, YouTube content creator, and currently the back-to-back -back number one tank playing mostly Wrecking Ball. So let's start things off with the ball general tip. The easiest and most important tech for Wrecking Ball is the high ground pile driver. Basically, if there's enough space between you and the ground, you can trigger pile driver on the high ground with minimal effort. The important thing to remember is pile driver is like a second jump into the direction that you're facing. So if you face away from the high ground, you're going off. But if you 180 it, you'll be right back on it. And with that out of the way, let's get the ball rolling. Against Diva, she will win the 1v1 every time if you get in her face. Instead, utilize your superior range damage and poke her out. Be careful with Minefield versus Diva Bomb. It goes without saying, Nuke clears the field. Against Orisa, boop her out of her shield as often as possible. She has zero mobility and a cooldown shield, so being out of position is a big deal for her. You can also minefield her paper thin shield and still have plenty of mines to go around. Additionally, minefielding Bongo is almost always worth it. A single mine always pops right where you stand, so I'll just poop one out right on top of it. Against Ryan, Steadfast makes him harder to bully, but it can still be worth booping him away from cover. Additionally, if you minefield behind him, it could be a free kill since he'll have to back into mines or turn away from your team to clear the field. If his shield is already getting low, it could be worth forcing the minefield just because he won't be able to easily sweep them all. On some maps, you can abuse Wrecking Ball's third person peek to scout a Roadhog and deny him from hitting hooks or landing the follow up shot. If he whole hogs you, you can use the momentum of whole hog along with grapple to get you out of spots you'd otherwise get stuck in. But the bigger tip is, unless you have help, don't mess with a pig with whole hog. Versus Sigma, you can do significant damage to his shield during downtime and because of his pokey playstyle, it's easy to boop him out of position and if you have minefield, he'll probably die. Only thing you need to watch out for is rock, but really, it's a boulder so good luck dodging that. Against Winston, he is very easy to bully. Poke him out as often as possible, and if you think he's about to dive, you can boop him away or to the point of no return. Also, if you have a good read on him, you can pile driver to stop the initial leap completely. This is good for stopping engages and escapes. Against Ball, his entire kit counters itself. Fireballs usually reject each other, you can pile drive a pile driver, and minefield clears minefield. Regardless, I'd avoid using Minefield second because although the mines will trade, only the enemies will deal explosion damage since they were active first. Also, the best way to start off a ball 1v1 is with Fireball. It instantly chips off half their armor and they have to respect it or go blue. Alright, I know you've heard it a million times, but listen to me when I say try to wait out Zarya bubbles before you slam. Not only can her bubbles block pile driver, but they can also block shield count and even tank two mines. If you actually stall out your engage even a little, teams with her become a glass cannon real quick. There's not too much of a secret when dealing with Ash. Her range damage is insane, so you have to close in as much distance without her noticing. If she messes up Coach Gun, it's time to pounce. Even if she doesn't, sometimes you have to engage just so your team doesn't get tapped in rotations. No surprise here, but you can boot Bob off the objective or out of your team's line of sight. Against Bastion. Well, he's not your problem, but he's also kind of your problem. Unless you have Minefield, you almost never win these. You can go two ways when dealing with Bastion. Either coordinate a slam engage with your team, or get behind and boop whoever is helping them. First and foremost, if Doom is charging a punch close to you, don't use Grapple, otherwise he's gonna cancel it, and chances are, you're dead. Other than that, you can outrange him really easily, and if you manage to land an uppercut, you can quickly escape the follow-up by holding your pile driver ability. Against Echo, the 1v1 matchup is surprisingly one of the closer ones. Your best bet for fighting her is waiting out her flight until she's about to reach ground level. If you do this, you should have just enough time to burst her down before she flies off again. If she decides to copy you, just run away so she doesn't farm minefield. If Genji blades, you can minefield your team defensively, but in most cases, it's just better to go on the offense and minefield his team. You also have the option of booping him to mess up his resets. An important note is that your boop damages through deflect, and so does your pile driver, so be sure to look for that in the 1v1 downtime. Hanzo doesn't have any fall off damage, so you'll want to take the fight as close as possible as soon as possible. The go to safe engage is the fireball into primary fire and melee spam. The hitbox on Junkrat's steel trap is dumb, like dummy thick dumb. 
If you don't dedicate half your mental energy to staring at the ground, you're going to get countered by accident. Don't fight Junkrat indoors. You almost never win these. Lastly, if he rip tires, look for the body, and if he decides to blow you up, you can tank one for the team at 600 HP or with adaptive shields. Ballers be gangsta till McCree hits them with a the good old shoot into stun, into roll, into fan the hammer, into high noon cancel, fan the hammer. I, I, I think you get it. The trick for beating McCree is connecting your cooldowns before the stun hits. Ground rolls are usually the easier and safer option because you're coming in fast and reducing the chances of him landing the flashbang. But if you can hit a pile driver, it's almost free. My advice for outplaying stun is to use your mobility and third person peek to get the jump on him. May can't freeze what she can't catch. Seriously, her, her primary fire used to be so strong against Ball, but now you can pile drive her right in front of it and grapple away no problem. In the event she does manage to catch you, make sure to swap to Ball mode right before the freeze locks. That way you can tuck your hamster back into the ball and she can't headshot you. Furthermore, if she ice blocks, you can jump on top of it and Goomba Stomp her on the way out. Also, if you didn't know, you can grapple Cryo and Maywall. If you think about it, Wrecking Ball is kind of like the Soldier 76 of tanks. He's really fast, he has these long range hit scan bullets, so he's not too bad at shooting down a far that oversteps her boundaries. That being said, you can chip at her health from a distance, but don't waste too much time if she's getting pocketed. Reaper is sorta kinda not your problem, you can poke him out from a distance, but if he gets too close, he's just gonna get a mega health pack off you. A lot of times, it can be worth booping him away from your teammates, so he doesn't two-tap someone, but for the most part, don't actually try to fight him. If Soldier doesn't pop Biotic Field before you hit Pile Driver, you can actually out-damage the healing, but it's very important you don't melee unless it's the finish. If you melee too early, you'll be wasting damage and he'll begin to out-heal you. Alternatively, if you slam and he pops Biotic Field, you can roll back, boop him out of it, and track away. But usually, the safest play is to bait it out and come back later when he doesn't have it. Against Sombra... Just don't get hacked. It's a lot easier to not get hacked if you know where the Sombra is and isn't. She can't be everywhere at the same time. I know what you're thinking, what if she's invisible? If that's the case, then you can just go faster than she can de-stealth and hack you. You're a harder target to hack if you go for roll-throughs rather than pile drivers. Another note to add on top of that note is you can expect your minefield to get EMP'd, but so long as you don't die for it, it's 100% worth. So with that in mind, try and bait EMP, but play cover so the enemy can't capitalize on it. Wrecking Ball is one of the best tanks for getting behind and clearing Symmetra's turrets, so make sure you do that. If you're expecting a TP strat, you can scoop and poop the enemy and pretty much get a free fight win. She's pretty free in a 1v1, she doesn't have any CC to stop your cooldowns, and her base damage is pretty weak. But it goes without saying, you don't want to fight her if she's getting any type of healing. If Torb doesn't have his overload, you can easily win the 1v1 with the right approach, but outside of that, don't mess with him. Hammond's ability to get behind enemy lines makes it easiest for him to eliminate the turret, so make sure you do that. Unlike May's ultimate, if you mine in Coom, the mines will die before they activate, so try to wait that out. Against Tracer, you can chip off some of her health to delay the setup, but don't draw out the 1v1 if she has cooldowns, otherwise you'll just feed her a pulse bomb. If she ever tries to check your flank, go the other way, or use your superior mobility to just outlap her. Widowmaker, aka priority number one, she can't one-shot your team if you're in her face. It's usually best to approach her without any cooldowns, that way when she grapples away, you can hunt her down. Sometimes a hamster needs a nap, but a lot of times you can avoid the sleep if you play your distance properly. If you poke at her from this range, oftentimes she'll feel rushed to hit the skill shot. Throw in a toss-up movement like a transformation strafe and there's a good chance she missed a shot. Alternatively, if she saves sleep for post pile driver, you have the option of rolling under her, which can really make hitting the sleep hard for Ana's on a lower sensitivity. Against Baptiste, you can boop him and his teammates out of lamp, or just slam the general area for fat AoE damage and shields. A big tip for dealing with amplification matrix is to just minefield it. Him and his team will have a hard time using it when they have to play dodge the mines. Even if I don't have mines, sometimes if I have adaptive shield, I'll still go for slam to force cooldowns or give my team time to run. Believe it or not, Brig is the biggest wrecking ball counter in the game. She can shield the block pile driver, shield the block shields, bash to cancel grapple, bash to cancel pile driver, and whip basically counters grapple and pile driver since it launches you the opposite direction of where you're trying to go. Oh, and then I mentioned she heals the entire team while doing it. Wait a minute, I forgot this was a Wrecking Ball Tips video. Yeah, so basically the best course of action versus a Brig trying to shut you down is giving her the McCree treatment. Go on a stealth mission. She can't stun you if she can't find you. 
Sometimes you'll be gated off by a brig in a 1v1 scenario, and as of this patch, your damage doesn't really beat or self-heal, so don't actually expect to win. Much like Doomfist, you don't want your grapple to get cancelled, so if it's a 1v1, just tank the bash and then grapple away. If Brig is looking at you funny, she probably wants to use Whip and Trigger Inspire. If you have the luxury of baiting that out, then do that. Also, my tip for Rally, basically just AFK until it's over. The Lucio Baller will always try to dunk on you, but you can use this to your advantage. If he's forcing a 1v1, get in his face, but don't use any cooldowns. Lucio's will inevitably use boop in an attempt to gain some spacing, and since it's a 5 second cooldown, you hit him with the old scoop and poop, and usually it's a free kill. Also, Lucio's tend to wall right into mines a lot, so I guess use minefield and that'll happen. Remember earlier when I said don't waste your time shooting far if she's getting pocketed? Well that's because you should be shooting the pocket. It's very easy to pepper Mercy down, so look for those opportunities. If she's pocketing the hitscan, you can bait her by shooting the hitscan, and then when she flies over, you secure the kill on her instead. You're also one of the best heroes for cancelling reses. Play far enough to where she doesn't suspect you're camping a res, but still close enough to cancel it with a boop. Don't go for the pile driver though, because it won't knock her high enough to be out of range. If Mori ever uses fade, you can capitalize on this kill easily, just trust your aim. And don't get too punch reliant, otherwise her health is just going to go up. If she uses Coalescence, I like to divert her attention with boops and shooting, but don't invest too much time because unless she's already low, you're not going to kill her. Another note for Coalescence, avoid minefielding when it's up. Moira will just clear them and heal whoever gets hit. It's usually not a trade the ballers want. Against Zen, he's the definition of a glass cannon. If you close in the distance before he takes half your health, he's usually a liability for the enemy team. It sounds obvious, but if you're ever discorded, don't try to go in. Just break line of sight and wait for it to go away, otherwise you might end up regretting it. Oftentimes, you'll end up baiting out Transcendence with Minefield, but it is a worth trait. If you're expecting this interaction to happen, keep one foot out the door so you make it out alive. And that's it for the updated ball tips. Thanks, Yudel, for joining us again, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for having me, CarQ. For the audience, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Or you can find me on YouTube at Yudel.